OpenAI can now return structured outputs and we don't even need to do any function calling hackery. Let's have a look at some code and then I'll explain how it works. So I actually have a use case for this, which is I have a CSV file with IDs and the titles of all the videos on this channel. And what I want to do is get some tags telling me like what content is in each of those videos. So let's have a quick look at the CSV file that I'm working with. So you can see I've got a bunch of uh, IDs down the left hand side and then I've got the titles down the right hand side in green. So let's launch IPython and then we're going to import some modules and then we're going to load the video CSV file and read it with the dict reader. Let's have a quick look what we've got and it's pretty much the same as what you saw in the file. We're now going to look at how to get some tags for that video. Now the OpenAI API lets you pass in either a JSON schema or a pedantic model. So I'm going to do a pedantic model because it's a little bit easier to read and it's less code. So we're going to import the base model from pedantic. Then we're going to create ourselves a class called tagged video that's going to have a title and then the tags, which is going to be a list of strings. And then we're going to create ourselves a videos class that's going to contain a list of those tagged videos. Okay. Now when we're using this, we need to make sure that we're installing OpenAI version 1.40.0 or higher. If you go any lower, the API doesn't have the required things and it will, it will fail. So let's import OpenAI and then we're going to initialize our client. Now there are two types of structured outputs. So we've got structured outputs for function calling. Now that works on a lot of different models. We've got GPT-40, GPT-40 mini, all the models after and including GPT-4-0613 and GPT-35 Turbo-0613. We're going to look at structured outputs on its own without any function calling. And that only works on GPT-40 mini and GPT-40-2024-0806. I know this naming is amazing. So let's have a look at how to use it. So we're going to time how long this takes and we're going to create ourselves a system message. So you are a YouTube content strategy expert. And then we're going to create ourselves a user message. So help me to create tags for the provided videos. And then we're going to pull out just the title from, we'll just do five videos. And then we're going to call client.beta and that's important. You need to have the beta in there. Dot chat dot completions dot pass. Again, that's a little bit different. Pass instead of chat. Pass in our model. And then we're going to pass in the messages. So we'll put in our system message and our user message. And then the response format here is going to be that videos pedantic class. Although here you could also have a JSON schema if you prefer. Let's kick that off and have it running. We'll speed it up a little bit and you can see it takes just under four seconds to run. So doing five uh, of my video titles, it's taken four seconds. Let's have a look what we've got in the response. So you can see we've got a parsed chat completion message, had to say that a few times, of videos. In there we see we've got the content that you'd normally get back and you can see it's in a JSON sort of structure. If we look a little bit down, you can see you've got a refusal a property. Now if it refuses to process this, usually for safety reasons, so perhaps if we asked it, I don't know, if you try to do a political campaign or something, it's going to maybe refuse to do that. It would come up with a reason there and it wouldn't uh, then have uh, any structured output for you. If we look a little bit down, you can see we've then got the past property. And we'll scroll down and get that into view. And you can see under there, we've got each of our videos. So we've got, for example, running a Hugging Face LLM on your laptop. It says the tags are Hugging Face, LLM, local deployment, and so on. If we go down a little bit more, you can see we've got Hugging Face GGUF models and we've got an introduction to Apache Parquet. And the tags look pretty good to me, although perhaps for a future iteration on this, maybe I would then get it to give me a load of tags for all my videos and then sort of narrow it down into what I think are good top level tags. Now, what I was curious is what happens if you mess with that user message? So let's put in nothing to pass here and we'll run that. Again, speed it up a little bit. See, it takes a little bit over four seconds. And let's have a look at what we've got. And you can see it's come back with a bunch of videos, even though I didn't give it anything. Uh, if we scroll down, you can see it's just completely made up uh, some videos. So understanding the algorithm, uh, 10 creative YouTube video ideas. So the hallucinations do not go away just because you're using structured output. And in fact, to be honest, if we were actually using this in our application, we would probably not pass in that type of message. And if we didn't have any videos, we just wouldn't call the API. Now, we're probably wondering, how does this actually work? So in the OpenAI blog, they explain a two-step approach. So the first step is they train the model to recognize schemas. And so we've seen similar in the OSS world with few shot prompting where you give it like a bunch of examples. Hey, when I give you this schema, I want you to see this sort of response. And then we've also seen more recently special syntax for tool calling in open source models. Now, OpenAI said using this approach got them 93% accuracy. I, so i.e. 93% of the time they were getting valid uh, output, but 7% of the time, presumably it was doing something wrong. 
So they therefore combined this with a second technique called constrained sampling or constrained decoding. And what this does is it constrains the tokens that are being generated. So instead of the, letting the LLM generate any token, it can only return tokens that match the schema that we've provided. And it needs to be dynamic because the valid tokens change based on what you've already produced. And so the way they do this is they take that JSON schema that we've passed in, i.e. the pedantic gets converted to a JSON schema, and they create themselves a context-free grammar. And then it's much easier to work out what are the next valid tokens. So for example, when it's creating video tags, we're not going to get like a suddenly get an object for the tags instead of an array. And we're also not going to get text at the beginning saying, yes, I'd love to create you tags. That's a great idea. Here are the, the tags. And so again, this technique, we've seen it being used in open source tooling as well. So Llama file, for example, has the ability to pass in a, a regex that then is used to constrain the output of the LLM. So if you're curious to see what was the old way that you, we used to have to do this, 